Welcome to my art channel. I'm Lei, and this is my digital inking tutorial, covering everything I know and use in regards to inking using a computer or an iPad slash other tablet. Of course, there are many other ways and styles to ink, but hopefully you find this video useful. I personally prefer inking digitally for a number of reasons. I'm a perfectionist with line art. I don't mind looser lines in other artists' work. Some of my favorite artists, such as Tori Ann from Juicy Ink, use sparse, expressive lines, or Nen Chang from Retro Mortis seldom uses line art at all. But as I mentioned in my traditional inking tutorial, I like solid graphic line work in my art. Another reason why I prefer digital inking is that I find it strains my hand and wrist less. As an artist, you have to remain aware of the stress you're placing on your drawing arm, which involves everything from shoulder to fingertip. Some examples of how to avoid stress is to try to maintain proper posture and ergonomics. So elevate your art materials to meet you instead of hunching over your desk. And take frequent breaks to stretch and move around even if you use a standing desk. With traditional inking, I tend to hold my pens too tightly without realizing it. I also have shaky hands, so it takes far more effort to get a clean, smooth line. With digital, I can use my whole arm to make sweeping, broad strokes. Best of all, if I mess up, it's easy to undo or erase. With traditional, I often go over lines several times to get them looking how I like, and it involves more controlled movements. You want to use your whole arm to draw your ink, versus using just your wrist, otherwise you might develop repetitive strain injuries such as carpal tunnel. Okay, so now that I've lectured you enough, let's get to what I'm actually doing. This first section of the tutorial is in a program called Clip Studio Paint Pro. I do have a video where I talk about some of my favorite programs, but in case you missed it, Clip Studio Paint is a program for Windows or Mac that is fairly similar to Photoshop, except it's geared towards drawing and painting, whereas Photoshop is geared towards photography. They have great sales on quite frequently, but regular price it's about 50 bucks, US that is. It's near identical to a program by the same company called Manga Studio, which you may have heard of as well. This actually isn't the final version of these inks. I started recording myself inking this picture in Clip Studio Paint, thinking this would be the final inks, but I ended up redoing it all in Procreate, which I'll get to in a moment. I wanted to include this footage because inking on a computer is very different from using Procreate on your iPad, and for most people this is how you'll be doing it. This is where I have to admit that all those smooth, sleek lines you see me making are kind of cheated. Clip Studio Paint does have a great stabilizer built in. That is, it stabilizes your line for you so you can get a smoother stroke but I'm using a nifty little app called Lazy Nesmi Pro. I will include links to all of the apps I'm using down below in the description box, so check that out if you're interested. But yeah, unfortunately, Lazy Nesmi Pro is only available on Windows, but hopefully a port for Mac is built soon because it's amazing and life-changing. Is it cheating? I don't think so. The less time you spend forcing your arm to make those clean, smooth lines, the less stress and strain you're placing on yourself. The combination of Lazy Nesmi Pro and Clip Studio Paint work really brilliantly for me. I do prefer inking in Clip Studio Paint to Photoshop, even though I've achieved some great line work in both programs. It's all personal preference. A lot of people prefer Paint Tool Sci. I recommend trying demos and trials of different apps and programs to find what works best for you. Clip Studio Paint also offers a vector line ability, which means your work is far more versatile than simple raster lines. I do plan on doing a quick tip video on this, if I haven't already, since vector versus raster can be hard to sum up, and I sense this video will be long enough as is. So why didn't I decide to finish inking with Clip Studio Paint? 
Well, to be honest, I prefer Procreate. Now that i found its streamlined function, it's faster for me. All this footage of me inking what I did of this piece in Clip Studio Paint took me 50 freaking minutes to do. For a face, some bangs, and an arm. Dang. So, let's move on to Procreate. It was also mentioned in that other video of mine about mixing art apps, and it is by far my favorite art app of the moment. I say of the moment because when I started creating digital art back when I was like 13 or 14, I used PaintShop Pro because I thought Photoshop was too photo-based. I actually didn't use Procreate for inking for some time until I drew a My Little Pony character for a friend. I was just playing around and I remembered in a video by someone who does Procreate art, I can't remember who, but probably Brad Colbo, that you could use a slider called Streamline to make your lines sleeker. So I tried it, and within half an hour the image was inked and it looked beautiful. It was mind-blowing that a $7 app on the iPad could do that. The downside to Procreate is that it doesn't like super huge file sizes. They're releasing Procreate 4 in November of 2017, so likely that will solve those issues. Now that I've discussed all the apps I use to create line work, let's talk about actually creating line work. Of course, as mentioned before, there are tons of ways to do this, but in my case, I like those clean, bold lines. I know I've said that before too, but it's my obsession. I love it. And it's not just me. Some of my favorite artists who use bold lines include Stefari, who I've been following for years on DeviantArt and her art has evolved into absolute perfection, and Danica Sills, who is one of the first YouTube artists I started following thanks to the siren call of her amazing line work. Unlike with my traditional inking where I lay down simple lines and then build on those, with digital inking I try to accomplish line weight and depth in a single stroke. This involves a lot of undoing and drawing, undoing and drawing to achieve. Using stabilizers, line smoothing, and apps like Lazy Nesimi really help with this. Also, I should mention, this only applies if you're using a drawing tablet or drawing monitor. If you're using a mouse, you won't be able to use pen pressure to create line heaviness for you, so you will need to build. For drawing tablets, I do recommend Wacom, but largely because I've personally only ever used that brand. I got my first tablet when I was 17 or 18 and bought a newer Intuos Draw about three years ago, which means that original tablet lasted me over 10 years. They're simple, but they work fantastic. You can find deals and sales every so often. I think I got mine for like 70 bucks Canadian, though regular price they're about 80 to 100. I do have a drawing monitor. I purchased an Artisol D13 in February 2016, which is about a year and a half ago from recording this now. It was 800 Canadian at the time, including shipping and everything, but there's still 300 or 400 less than a Wacom Cintiq. I'm not that brand loyal. All the reviews I've ever read cite that the Artisol is just as good, though I've never compared the two so I really can't say for sure. Sorry for the tangent, yet again. So if you have a tablet or drawing monitor, or some other way to create pen pressure with your stroke, how do you decide where line weight should be? In a certain way, you need to visualize your picture setting if it doesn't already have one. Where is your light source? I typically apply heavier line width and pressure to a line that would be in shadow, and the lines closer to the light source would be thinner. Of course, you can totally eyeball this. You can create effective lines without overanalyzing what you're doing. Practice is really key here. If you've watched any of my old sketchbook tours, I started off by creating really clunky, random, bold lines that didn't really make any sense, and over the years my line work developed as a skill. Another way I create line work is that I will create very broad, long strokes and extend lines farther than they need to be. Afterwards, I go in and erase where the lines overlap. 
Often my lines go on separate layers and then I merge them down when they look how I want them to. I'll try to include an example on the screen of doing just that because it's kind of hard to explain. This is something where Procreate lacks hotkeys or quick press buttons to make this easier, so I do need to pop into the layer menu frequently to merge and create new layers. So to summarize everything, because I know it's been a lot of information and I went on quite a few tangents, create smooth lines with broad movements and focus on developing your line weight in one stroke instead of trying to build it up afterwards. Work on multiple layers so you can overlap lines and then merge down when they're how you like. Oh, and try many different programs because you never know what might work best for you. I will be coloring this piece and talking about it in another video. If you have any questions or want to reach out to me, please leave a comment below or check out my social medias linked in the description box. Please give this a like if you found it useful and subscribe if you'd like to see more art tutorials and videos from me. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!